All right, hello, devotioners. How are you? I hope that you're doing well. God is so good. God is so faithful. God is so kind. God is so just. God is so true, and He is deserving of worship. I just want to um, stop by momentarily just to leave a word of encouragement to you uh, in our devotion today. And I really hope that this will uh, encourage you um, where you are and to know that God has your best interests at heart. I have just been so enamored by his goodness and his uncanny way of doing things and the awe that he leads me in, he, he leaves me awestruck of his glory and his majesty and his power. And the way that he comes in like a flood, you know, and, and just really lifts up a standard against the wiles of the enemy. At, 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 at a time when you, you feel like you're going under, God has a way of just rushing in and coming to uh, 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 our rescue, my rescue. And so I just want to just give God glory and honor. And I really hope that um, you can see his handiwork in your life as well. I just want to share with you from the book of Ruth and um, hopefully you can... Uh, You'll get, you'll find some time, very short um, book. Hopefully you can find some time to just sit with it and to just read the book of Ruth. I believe that you'll be able to glean uh, so much insights uh, from it. But the Lord has drawn me uh, to Ruth and drawn me to her in the field. And... I said, God, wow. Ruth left Moab to follow Naomi, who was um, older at this time. She was old in age at this time. Uh, she was bitterness, bit bitter of soul at this time. She lost everything. Um, and so she was returning back to the house of bread and Ruth decided that that she was going to accompany her um, and to offer her support and to show her kindness. And we learned that they went back to uh, to, to Bethlehem and uh, Ruth was taking care of her. And so Ruth found herself uh, in the field of Boaz. She didn't know that at the time, but she found herself in the field of Boaz just picking up leftovers. So that means she was after the reapers gathered everything that they could for that day. She was she now went after them and was gathering what was left. Hear me now. And so that means she was picking up, oh, I wonder if this is good, just throw back, oh, that's not good, this is good, this is good, this is good, that's not good, that's not good. And so so it was taking her quite some time to gather what was even left. It was a laborious task to, 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 to pick up the leftovers. But she did it with such diligence and with such grace. Oh my goodness. And Boaz took note of what she was doing. I want to pause for a moment to say to you that what you are doing, God sees you. The kindness that you are imparting to others, God sees you. The blessing that you are being to others, God sees you. It may feel like you're just offering kindness to them and nobody sees and nobody knows, but God sees you and God is paying attention to you. See, Ruth had no ulterior motives and that is the difference. She was doing it from her heart. She wasn't doing it to be rewarded. A matter of fact, she was quite satisfied with just gleaning the leftovers because it satisfied her needs. It satisfied the need of Naomi. So she was quite content, but to God, he wasn't satisfied with her just gleaning the leftovers. God saw her. And consequently, 
God allowed Boaz to see her hard work. God allowed Boaz to hear of the kindness that she was bestowing upon Naomi, who was a relative of, of, of his. And he took note of it. And so she would go in the field and she would reap the leftovers and she will go back home and she will continually uh, do this for a time. And Boaz said, you know what? To the farmers, listen, I want you to leave a handful of wheat specifically for root. Oh God. I want you to leave it there. Oh my goodness. And what I, I, I am feeling in my spirit to say to you is that God is going to accelerate you. God is going to catapult you. God is going to cause you to come into greater earlier than expected because you have been so faithful with little. You have been so kind with little. Ooh. And God is going to send somebody. You don't need a lot of you don't need a lot of persons. You just need one person in you you just need one person, one person to partner with you, to favor you. You need one person who will say, you know what? I see you and I'm going to use my resources to bless you. And I'm going to use my influence to cover you. And that is what God allowed to happen for Ruth. God allowed Boaz, who was one of the richest men at that time, to see her and to command his farmers to leave a handful of wheat so that she could reap easily. She didn't have to go through the fields. She didn't have to feel worried if anybody was watching her. She saw the handful of wheat lay down on the ground and she was able to pick up because those were good wheat. God is going to send you help. I don't know who this is for, but God is going to send you help in this season. Favor is going to be bestowed upon you by the direction of God, by the mercies of God, by the doing of God, by the handiwork of God. God is going to put it in somebody's heart to, to come and bless you, to take you further. You're there praying and saying, God, I need a breakthrough. God, I need a blessing. God, and, and God is going to put it on somebody's heart. You're going to, you're going to collide with somebody who's going to ask you, what do you want? What do you need? Similarly to to Nehemiah, a wall that should have taken him years to build. He built that wall in 52 days because God sent him help. God sent him resources and God sent him protection. That wall was supposed to take him 52 um, years to build. It took him 52 days to build because God accelerated the process because he had a burden for the things of God. Don't, don't, don't let anybody talk you out of doing good. Don't let anybody talk you out of doing the will of God. Because unbeknown to you, there is a blessing attached. There is favor attached. There is acceleration attached. God sees you. God sees you. Say to yourself, God sees me. God sees sees me God sees me and he's sending me help help is coming <laughs> help is coming provision is coming resource is coming blessings are coming and we know what happened to root that Boaz took a liking to her and marry her so she moved from 
a girl from Moab who decided to follow Naomi and to worship the God of Israel to a girl who was basically impoverished could have went and did otherwise but she decided that she was going to care for Naomi and she was going to be there for her to a girl who became almost satisfied with the leftovers in the field to now a woman who owned the field because she was married to the man who owned the field. It's powerful. It is powerful. It is just so powerful to me that when God has his hands on you, when God has a plan for your life, when God has chosen you to make a difference. God already has the provision. God already has the resources. God has already have the people ordained or the person ordained to help you. It's only a matter of time before God releases all of it to get his mission accomplished. And we know the story. Many of you know the story. She eventually gave birth to Obed and Obed, Jesse and Jesse, David. And we know that that was the lineage from which Jesus Christ came through. You don't know your impact right now. Mm -mm, you don't know your impact right now. <laughs> to, 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 to you, people just see you as just a normal person. Just an ordinary person. Uh, I don't see much from her. I don't see much from him. Uh, uh, but they don't know. They don't know what's in your bloodline. They don't know what God is setting you up for. They don't, they don't know how God is going to use you to make a, a great impact in what he is trying to accomplish in the earth. You may even look at yourself. Forget about what maybe other people are thinking about you. You may even look down on yourself right now and think, ah, I don't think I can accomplish that. I don't, I don't think I can do that. I don't think that I am fit for that space. I don't think that I fit with this group. I don't, uh, 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 uh. But give God time. Give God time. And he's going to just accelerate you. It's like a car. You know, those cars, I see them many times in certain areas. They're just, they're just taking off, just accelerating. Nothing has changed in the engine, but they're just going at a faster pace. They're covering more grounds. That's what God is going to do. That's what God is going to do. That's what God is going to do. Same route in the field. But this time, she was gathering more. <laughs> she was she got God God just accelerated her into greater. I believe that God is about to do that for some of us in this season. I feel it in my soul. I claim it. Does anybody claim it? This is not this is not just prosperity and blessings and stuff. This is something that is going to affect, have a great impact. Not on just your life, but on the kingdom of God. This is what I'm talking about. This has a kingdom impact, what God is going to do. So this is not you just taking things and putting it into your pocket and, and taking things and you just building a great edifice to, uh, you know, that you can just relax in and just lounge. And No, 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 no. We're talking about having kingdom impact. 
this is what God is going to do in this hour. Because there's some grounds that we have to make up. And God is putting things into order. And you are a part of God's plan. We'll talk soon. God bless you. May he cause his great face to shine upon you. And may he grant you his peace. The peace that passes all understanding. Say, God, I'm ready for acceleration. In Jesus' name.